Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Thank you for being with us here this morning at Unshackled Ministries in the city of Paramount. God is so wonderful. And God has come to bless us today. And we thank him for his presence here this morning. Amen. Amen. We just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to take complete control and charge over this service. May he lead us in all that we do here and all that we say here today in the name of Jesus. That the Lord God in heaven, our heavenly Father, will be glorified. That he will be praised. Amen. And that when we walk out of here, we will not let nothing or anything steal what God has given to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, God has given us a good word today. And it's never give up on God because he has never given up on you so we can have faith and we can trust in God for everything that he's doing in our lives and what we go through amen, amen. hallelujah but sometimes as the word's going to go forth today we start to blame 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 everything and anyone and God for our own foolishness hello when all the time it was our own choice or our own lack Amen. Yeah. It's not to put anybody down. We're all guilty of it. Amen. But uh, we have to learn that we never want to blame God for anything. Praise God. And uh, just trust that he is in control. Situations, circumstances occur. Then continue to praise God. Praise yeah. God. You know, don't give up on God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Let's thank the Lord. And, um, and uh, just get ready your hearts, amen, for what he's going to give us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We love you and we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I know, Lord, that you're a mighty God, that you're a loving God, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that you are the true and faithful one. Today we come before you to praise you, to adore you, to worship you, to bow down and humble ourselves before you this morning. We praise you today for everything that's going to come forward. May we have our hearts and our minds open to receive your word in its totality. And may the Holy Spirit guard all that you're giving to us today that we will not forget. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, all glory to the King of Kings. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. You love God today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I learned, yesterday I had the wonderful opportunity to be invited to a, a men's discipleship a conference in the city of Norwalk. And wow, that was awesome. It was just an exciting time, an exciting event. Amen. And uh, it was a blessing. Brother Javier happened to be available to go with me, so he went over there. God touched his heart. When they had the altar call, this brother jumped over the chairs and everything and ran to Jesus' feet. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Praise God for all that he's doing. Amen? Hallelujah. And, um, you know, and it's an awesome thing. You know, the Lord just shared with me, you know, that, um, you know, God has really touched uh, Brother Javier. For those of you on Facebook and YouTube later, Brother Javier is the, the guy in the middle back here. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. You know, he's got a powerful testimony of what God has done in his life. A lot of things that he endured and went through. Amen? And uh, now he finally has peace because his trial was over. But I like his spirit and his attitude because of the fact that he accepted responsibility for his part in the trial that he had to endure. And God has blessed him, awakened him, and picked him up. And now every Sunday morning, he's here to lead us in praise and worship. Amen. Out of the gratefulness of his heart, I believe. Amen. 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 He's also a, a, a pretty... Um, pretty smart guy as far as business. He's got his own business. What, what's the name of it again? West Coast Sanitation. <laughs> West Coast Sanitation. Amen. 
And uh, the blessing part of it is yesterday as we were driving uh, to uh, the conference, he says, you know, you know, Pastor, the Lord has really blessed my business ever since I dedicated it to him and made him my partner in the business. Amen. Amen. And that was just exciting, you know, and I shared with them that uh, when I used to go to the Christian businessmen's uh, network meetings, um, they used to be all kind of testimonies like that from the businessmen, that uh, Christian businessmen, that they would talk about how awesome God had blessed them when they just gave everything to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So one of these days we're going to have Brother Javier come up here and share his testimony, amen, and what God has done to him and, and how he's changed him and he's changed his whole family and his whole outlook on life. Amen. But right now he's going to get busy and lead us into the presence of the Lord in praise and worship. So let's just give the Lord a praise offering. For his friend, and my story isn't over. 
my story's just begun. And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, enter into the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's Leave behind your 
Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is awesome. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise God. There is no better place to be than to be in the presence of God. Amen. Now you can have that all the time, not just on Sunday mornings. You practice the presence of God. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you go to work, when you're cooking dinner, when you're cleaning the yard, just practice the presence of God. He's there with you. Amen? Amen. When you're going through struggles, practice the presence of God. When everything's going good, practice the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Praise his holy name. You know, church, sometimes we start to give up. And we start to blame our situations or our circumstances on God, on others, and that's not a good place for us to be. We need to learn to accept responsibility for what we, you know, our, our lack of faith sometimes. We need to trust in God. Jesus continuously rebuked his disciples because of their lack of faith. Even in the times that they saw him do these mighty miracles, even they sometimes came short. Amen? You know, uh, Lazarus' sisters, Martha and Mary, one of them said when Jesus, he heard that his friend Lazarus was sick. And when he got there, one of the sisters told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. John the Baptist himself, when he was in prison, sent somebody to ask Jesus, sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the one or should we expect somebody else? Because his situation was tough. You know, he was in prison. Peter, you know, he let the devil get in him and he started telling the Lord, no, Lord, that's not going to happen to you. Amen. So when things get tough, we need to accept we can't blame God. God has made a sure plan. He's written it. And wherever... You know, whenever we feel like giving up on God, I would encourage you, don't do that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Look back to the cross. Go back to Calvary. Hallelujah. See this man that endured so much suffering and pain for us. See him with the crown of thorns. See him on the cross with the nails in his hands and his feet. And the struggle that he endured so that we could have life and life abundantly. Amen? Amen. We got to stop looking at our situations when they get tough and go Amen. back to Calvary. Hallelujah. Remember what God has done for you. Hallelujah. I think in the book of Revelations, he told the, one of the churches that they had lost their first love. And I think that's what it is sometimes. We get so caught up, even as we're growing in Christ, we forget all that God has already brought you through. All that God has already done in your life. Praise God. Amen. Love the Lord today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Never give up on God because he's never given up on you. In Psalms chapter 19 and verse 3 it says, A man's own folly ruins his life. Yet his heart rages against the Lord. A good preacher from way back in the days, he said this, If you don't do your part, don't blame God. Man. Man. I used to love uh, to see I still look him up on YouTube and 
You can't see too many of them, but he was a heck of a preacher. Glory to God. Billy Sunday came before Billy Graham. He was just awesome. I think he was a, a, an ex-professional baseball player and became a preacher. Amen. And uh, he would do some very, very awesome things while he was preaching. <laughs> he would steal seconds, <laughs> but use it for an illustration. Amen. But I like, he said this, he quoted this. He says, if you don't do your part, don't blame God. Man, hallelujah. The Lord has told us, you know, when we don't do our part, we're wrestling with our flesh because our flesh wants to do other things and our Amen. spirit wants to do the right thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Another quote from a, from a lady, she's, her name is Jenny B. Jones, and she says, don't hang on to old hurts. You can spend your years blaming God, blaming other people, but in the end, it was choice. Man. Whatever happened. Some people create their own storms and then get upset when it starts to rain. You know? And those quotes, they're just so... Uh, right on target amen you know not letting go of things and blaming others or even blaming god doing all the right things living the right life but still blaming god that affects your walk with god it affects your devotional life amen one of the saddest things i heard yesterday at the devotional for the men um, is that they were sharing that um, I believe it's 80 or 90 percent of Christians Christians brothers and sisters they have no devotional life amen a devotional life is when you sit down and you read your Bible you know whatever your time limit is five to ten minutes it's a devotional Spend time saying, God, you are so awesome. Today, I'm just so happy to walk with you through this day. Amen. Hallelujah. See, a devotional is something that you set your heart to every day. Amen. Sometimes we're lacking in showing our children those things. Amen. But you have to keep that and make that a practice so that they can grow up. Amen. It's exciting, you know, both preachers. Uh, one quick thing that I just caught, I thought was interesting. One of the preach, one of the speakers there, he would, uh, he would be sharing his message and he would say, are you with me? Over to the whole thing. You reminded me of somebody. <laughs> um, but I said, I felt better. God, it made me feel better. I said, hey, are you with me or not? Amen. And uh, sometimes, though, because we'll start going through here and, you know, the, the enemy doesn't sleep even when you come to church. How many of you know that? Amen. The Holy Spirit is trying to talk to you. You keep your focus on what's being said, receiving it in your heart. Amen. You won't allow, you won't entertain the thoughts that will come up about what I'm going to do tomorrow, what I'm going to eat after church, you know, or any of those things. You keep your focus on the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I like to call that just keeping my eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Amen. Glory. Praise God. But this song, this proverb was written, and, and I, I just, it just, you know, I was doing my devotionals, and I hadn't made our copies uh, yet, and I just said, well, I'm just going to read Proverbs and Psalms. So I did, and I didn't, I didn't really read this. I was just focused on chapter 17 and 18 that I was reading in the book of Proverbs. And then all of a sudden, I just looked over, and this one just like, got real bigger in letters, this, this verse, amen? Because it's so true. A man's own folly ruins his life, yet his heart rages against the Lord, amen? In the King James, it says, the foolishness of a man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Well, what is folly? Because that should be something very, very, we want to understand what it means. Amen? Because it says a man's own folly. What's, what is folly? Well, I looked it up and it says um, it's foolishness. 
madness. Amen. And forgive me if you think this is a bad word in church, but stupidity. Amen. Silliness, craziness, and recklessness. Amen. That is folly. Amen. And then in the King James word uses the word fretted. But in the NIV it uses the word rageous. But fret or fretted means worry, fuss, trouble, upset, hassle, or bother. Getting irritated or agitated quickly. Amen. Amen. And those two things when it says, you know, how can we get irritated at God? How can we get agitated against God, the creator of all? In our situation, in our problems. I mean, nobody expects sickness to come on a person, right? You go through your life, you try to live healthy, you do everything. But sometimes good, godly Christians get sick. They get attacked by various diseases that are out there. But that doesn't change that God is a God of love. God is your healer. God is going to, you know, we have to just trust that he's in control. Whatever the outcome is, yes. I know that's hard to accept, but whatever it is, it's the will of God. Yes. I walk in it. I accept it. I go in that direction, and I thank God, and I praise God. Amen? Amen. I don't sit around and say, God, why me? Because it can happen to any of us. Hello? Hallelujah. Martin Luther, he gave two um, examples uh, here from the scripture. He says, we have here two instances of men's folly. That they bring themselves into straits and trouble and run themselves aground and embarrass themselves. The foolishness of man pervert, perverts his way. Man meet, the cross, man meet with crosses and disappointments in their affairs and things do not succeed as they expected and wished. And it is owing to themselves and, and their own folly. And it's owing to themselves and their own folly. It is their own iniquity that corrects them. Hello? Number two, that when they have done, so they lay the blame upon God and their hearts fret against him as if he had done something wrong or done them wrong. Whereas really they, they wrong themselves in fretting we are enemies of our own peace and become self-tormentors. In fretting against the Lord, we affront him, we insult, we insult him. His justice, we, we affront him, his justice, his goodness, his sovereignty, and it's very absurd to take occasion from the trouble which, which we pull upon our own heads by our own willfulness or neglect or quarrel with him when we ought to blame ourselves for it is our own doing. Amen? Amen. When we give ourselves to the Lord wholeheartedly, he blesses us. Hallelujah. Amen. When we give ourselves to the Lord 50%, he'll bless you. 50%. Amen. What does the other 50% do to you? Hello. God loves you. God cares about you. That's why he says to surrender. Amen? Amen. Praise God. There's a scripture in here that it goes along with it. It says in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 1, this is what the Lord says. Where is your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away? Or to which of my creditors did I sell you? Because of your sins you were sold. Because of your transgressions, your mother was sent away. See, God goes right to the point. Amen? Because everybody's going to start saying it's somebody else's fault. Somebody else did it or my circumstance or whatever. Amen? But you have to keep your eyes on the Lord. Hello? Are you always blaming God for your problems? We should never blame or be angry at God, especially for our own foolish, our own foolishness. 
mistakes and sins. Hello? God says, come to him. If you're weary, life has torn you down or just the day's journey has got you tired and weary. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy, he says. But when do we do that? We let ourselves endure the weariness. Or when we're tired and weary, we become cranky and sometimes even foul mouthed. Sometimes we forget that we shouldn't use or let our attitude be out there. So the Bible says, if you have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Say right. We need to trust in our God. Yes. He's not just a religious symbol. He's not, we don't serve a religion. Amen. We serve God through a relationship of what he has done for us. Hallelujah. And that should only make us grateful. Amen. Amen. Only Amen. grateful. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when I had to endure brain surgery, and when you think about it, it sounds worse than what it was, but I'm minimizing it because it was very gruesome. And then I was angry at everybody afterwards. You know, kind of like, That guy that got in the in the fish. Jonah. <laughs> Jonah. Amen. Thank you. When he went to go do what God said, and then the people repented, so God didn't destroy them. But he had been preaching that God was going to destroy them. And then he got all mad at God because he didn't destroy them. Amen? Amen. And he got mad. He started blaming God. I knew you weren't going to do it. That's why I didn't want to come. He started saying it. God got on his case and set him straight. Amen. And I came out of my surgery, I was mad like Jonah. They opened my head up, kept me open for six hours, amen. Hallelujah, and I should have just listened to Brother Anthony the night before the surgery. He said, don't let them operate on you. And I did. And they didn't find no brain tumor in there. But the suffering that I had to endure for the months and years to come was tremendous. But God is faithful. Here I am today. Amen. Hallelujah. Loving the Lord, praising his holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, Job in chapter 2, verse 9, it says this. Because Job, I mean, whenever you start going through difficulties and rough times, sit down and read the book of Job. Maybe you don't have to read the whole book. Just read like the first 10 chapters. Maybe the first five. And you see everything that this man endured. And the opening up says, God was bragging about Job. Amen. Even to the devil. Hallelujah. He told the devil, have you seen my servant Job? He's a righteous man. Hello. Amen. You know the devil, he came up with some kind of little, some of his schemes, amen. Yeah, to try to make God not be right. But God is always right. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. You just got to accept that you're not right all the time. Amen. Hello. Right. From the oldest to the youngest, to the ones that have been serving the Lord along, you always got to keep, don't ever let pride come in. Hello. Amen. Right in what God has done. That's always good. Hallelujah. But his own wife, because sometimes there'll be people in our own families. His wife said to him when he was going through all of this, and his, his body and his health had been attacked now. He had lost everything, his, his, his money, his land, his children, his family had all died, and now sickness was attacking his body. And his wife says to him in Job chapter two, verse nine, his wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. How would you like to have a friend like that that came to you when you're going through difficult, challenging times? Just give up on God and go through whatever you're going to go through. Huh? 
I mean, that was his wife. <laughs> Hello? That's just the point is, it can come from anywhere. Hello? The wife can be, want to serve God, have faith, going through a little difficulty, and the husband can even mess up on her because he don't pay attention. Hello? Are you here with me? So, he replied to her, though, this is his faith. This is why God gave him more than what he lost. He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Man. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Amen. When you think about that, we can't blame God. But are we always blaming God for our problems? We should never, we should never blame or be angry at God, especially for our own foolishness, our own mistakes, and our own sins. We say things like, God. Why didn't you stop me from making that decision? Why didn't you talk to him before you made the decision? Amen. Amen. Lord, what do you think? Because God will get you out of it. Hello? When you leave it in the Lord's hands, the house that we own now in the city of Bellflower, that house came and went, came and went. When we first saw the house, it was for sale for 193000 right? So we were interested, stopped and looked at it. First thing we did is, there's no furniture in there because it was an open house. The kids got down and we sat down in the kitchen of that house. And we started praying, God, if this is your will, then you're going to give us this house. Amen. This, this is a tremendous testimony. Every real estate person we went to said, oh, you're never going to find a house for those prices here in L.A. You know? And I said, God can make a way through the Red Sea. Amen. They just get back, you know. No, they know their business. They know the, everything, you know. But if God makes a way, it doesn't matter what science or people say. Amen. God can make a way. Hallelujah. Long story short, that house went and came and went and came and the price dropped to uh, 170 something. And, and we were about to sign the papers, Amber. And sitting down here over here at the real estate place. And my hand started shaking like this. Oh my goodness. I mean, literally like this, and I couldn't sign the papers. So I got up and I told the lady, you know what? Never mind. And she got so upset with me. There's somebody in the next room, she said, that wants to buy this house. And I looked at her and I said, is that the truth? And we walked out of there. Now, Sister Martha wasn't too happy though. She, she loved that house. Amen. And God willing, sometime this year, it'll be her house. She'll own it. Amen. No banks involved. <laughs> um, so we just waited. Went through a whole month of just waiting, looking around, still in other places. And, um, We drove by again, circumstances took us down that street again, we saw the house again, this time it was a different real estate later. Just to make a long story short, we ended up buying a house that was for sale for 193000 In the beginning, about two months before that, we ended up buying for 150, 150, uh, 150000 So you see, when you don't blame and you wait on God, things can turn out better for us. Right. Hello? Just like the brain surgery. I think I'm better now. I just got a hole in the back of my head. <laughs> Praise God. We say things like, God, why didn't you stop me from making the, that decision? Well, I know why he stopped us. Amen? Yeah. Why did you put that person in my life who caused me to sin? If you wouldn't have put that person, if you wouldn't have put Eve here, everything would have been all right. But it wouldn't have completed the purpose of God, would it? Hello? Hallelujah. Why did you put me in a world with so much sin? Why didn't you protect me, Lord? When Job was going through his, through severe trials and tribulations, did he blame God? No. We have to learn more and be more like Job. 
The more we lose and suffer in this life, the more we should worship God yeah. and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory. Blessed be the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, when we lose, we win. Hallelujah. When Jesus hung on the cross, the devil and all his demons were having a New Year's resolution party. Hallelujah. Are you here with me? We got rid of him. He's gone. Talking about Jesus. But was he gone? Amen. No. The story didn't end at the cross. No, sir. What he did on the cross is what we look at. He paid the price for our sins and our redemption. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. So Glory. he didn't lose. Hallelujah. God has nothing to do with evil. Only Satan does. And, he ne and never forget that, church. No. God has never promised that Christians won't suffer in this life. Nah, and nah. Once you got that through, you'll start being more in your powerful relationship with God. Right. We're going to suffer. I'm suffering right now, this moment. Amen. Nah, nah. But I still get up every day to do what God wants me to do. Right. As a matter of fact, this week has been an awesome week. In through my pain and suffering, my back's been really in tormenting pain. Amen. The knee's better, but the back's just, sometimes it don't stop hurting. Amen? But he's blessed me so much. I've been busy. I think I did three yards this week. <laughs> yeah, cut the grass, trimmed them and everything. Hello? It was a blessing, and I enjoyed it. Amen? And uh, because I guess when I'm working, I don't feel the pain. I just keep going. Pushing that. I'm having fun with my new electric lawn mowers, toys <laughs> like that. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. God has never promised, though, that Christians won't suffer in this life. Right. What is your response to pain? When times get tough, we should never complain and say, it's your fault. You did it. Isn't that the way we do it all the time? Amen. Yeah. I don't like to blame anybody. I just say I didn't do it. Because I grew up in a world that you didn't blame. Or didn't. I, I just didn't do it. And I don't know who did it. Are you here with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. But um, we should use adversity when challenging times come. We should use adversity in life to cherish God more, to get closer to God. Know that God is in control of the situation and all things work together for good. Instead of looking at it for every excuse to blame him, trust him at all times. When we stop trusting God, we will start to harbor bitterness in our hearts toward him and question his goodness. Never give up on God because he's never given up on you. Right. When bad things happen, even if your faults, even if it's your fault, use it to grow as a Christian. Amen. Use it to grow as a Christian. When King David sinned with Bathsheba, he hid his sin for many years until a man of God stood before his face and said, David, you're the man. Not meaning that he's the man that we say it today. You messed up, dude. Amen. And when David saw that God knew he said, you know what, Lord, I've repented. That's where we get Psalms 51 from. We're going to read that later. Amen. Are you here with me? Hello? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Things work together. Never give up on them. When bad things happen, even if it's our fault, we can grow as a Christian. If God said he will work in your life, and he will help you through trials and as a Christian, then he's going to do just that. Amen? Don't just tell God you're going to trust him. Amen? But trust him. 
trust him, church. Because a lot of us can say we trust in God. But then I'll ask you the next question. Why are you always worried? Why are you always fidgets? Why are you always talking about the problem? Why are you, you know what I mean? Why are you always, you know, you trust God and God forgave you and you say you forgive, but you can still see the bitterness for the person or that wound from what was done to you. It comes out of your mouth. But instead you should say, Lord, if you forgave me. See, sometimes we forget how messed up we were when we start looking and trying to compare other people to other people. That's why the Apostle Paul says, when we start to compare ourselves with ourselves and with others, amen, we're very foolish. Only when I compare myself, you know, as far as say, Lord, I'm, I'm messed up. You know, I'm saved, but I was messed up. I remember the kind of person I used to be. I don't like that person. Amen. That's why I love to, to, to get my grandchildren, give them hugs and, and love them. Amen. Amen. Hello. Because as a parent, some of the times we were growing up, most of the time, we didn't know the Lord. And even when we did, we were in the process of growing in the Lord. But we still didn't know how to love completely. Amen. To hug them. As they get older now, I can try to hug my son or my daughter. They kind of pull away, you know. <laughs> no. But uh, but not the grandkids. They like to hug still. Amen. Praise God. I wanted to share some scriptures with you on um, folly. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 25, I believe it's going to be up there. It says, may the Lord pay no attention to that wicked man Nabal. He's just like his name. His name is fool and folly goes with him. But as for me, your servant, I did not see the men my master sent. And this was speaking about Abigail's husband. Abigail ended up being King David's wife as well. But her husband, David, had been taking care of his, of his uh, property and his possessions. He was helping to guard them. So David just assumed that the man would be grateful and, 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 you know, share a little bit of the, 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 when he sold his product. But the man didn't. He says, I don't know who you are and I don't know nothing and I'm not giving you anything. Well, that, that made David get real upset. Amen. And he was going to go with his little army of vigilantes and he was going to go over there and he was going to get, a, get, get even with that guy. Amen. But that man's wife, Nabal's wife, Abigail, had common sense and wisdom. And she went over there, she loaded up her stuff up, and she was going to give David all these different things to, for, the, for his men to eat and drink. And she, and she got off her horse, and she ran to where David was at, and, or a donkey or whatever it was. I don't know. But, and she got down, and she bowed down, and she said, David, I didn't know about what my husband did. Amen. But his own foolishness, you know, David never did nothing to him because by Abigail going to David, she saved uh, the whole people that was there because David had said not, nobody was going to survive. Amen. So she saved everybody by being wise, covering her husband's foolishness. And she went back home and about 10 days later, the Bible says that foolish Nabal he had some kind of stroke or had a heart attack and he died. That's how she ends up being a widow and ends up having me. Amen? Praise God. Um, but folly, the folly people make. And then, and then Job, uh, in Job 42 verse 8 says, So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayers and not deal with you according to your folly. And what did they do? He was talking to the three men that had went to comfort Job and console Job when he was going through his suffering and his trial. Amen? They all gave him wisdom. They all kind of gave him comforting words. But a lot of times they were playing the blame game and they were saying that he did this and did that. They were never really giving God the glory. So God got upset with them because they were giving him the wrong type of counsel. Hello? 
So God's not going to destroy them, but he does say at the end of it, when everything's, Job changes everything, and he tells them to go to Job so that Job can pray for them, so that God won't have to deal with them for their foolishness. Amen? Hello? Folly. Folly can be very bad. And like I told you, folly can be foolishness. Amen? And this, this one here, Psalms 38, verse 5, this is like real real heavy my wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly you know have you ever had a, a cut or something that it got infected Amen. you could just see it and it got really ugly and stuff like that it's just, it's just ugly amen well, how would you like to go through that with a heart like that all your life? Amen. It happens to us because we feel that God doesn't deal with situations or handle things the way that we want it done sometimes. And it can affect, like I told you, everything, your devotionals, your reading, your praying, you know, it can affect you because you say, God, well, why don't you, why don't you? deal with this or why don't you speak to these people or why don't you you know we, we go into a lot of these different things because we're trying to be in control and God says I got it you just have to wait on me hello yeah. and I just say I still I used to get mad and I used to be like that having festering souls of anger and frustration and anger and frustration but then one day God says let it go find it, I'll let it go. Amen. But that kind of attitude can get you in more trouble. Amen. Like God told Moses, hit the rock. I mean, tell the rock to give you water. And Moses went and hit the rock. That's why he didn't go into the promised land. Amen. Praise God. So you don't want your wounds to be like that. Um, Psalms, uh, Psalms um, 69 verse 5 says, you know my folly, O oh God. My guilt is not hidden from you. You know my foolishness, O oh God. God knows all of our foolishnesses. Amen. Sometimes we like to walk around and think, you know what, I'm not a fool. I don't make mistakes and, you know, and this and that, you know, and oh my goodness. We all do. You all have your foolish moments. You all have your lacks. Amen. Hopefully you will never become like Job's wife, or even like Lot's wife. Hello? Yeah. Look forward to what God has for you. Amen? Amen. Hello? Psalms 85, verse 8 says, I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints. Amen? When God helps and he's coming to our life, but then he tells them this let them not return to folly let them not be foolish anymore amen what does it take for us to grow church seriously it, it, it's not that easy folly is something that we all deal with and we're going to continue to deal with foolishness Hello? but if you're honest with god he can change things hello praise god Psalms 5, I mean, Proverbs 5, 23 says, he will die for lack of discipline, led astray by his own great folly. Wow. And check out what it says in Proverbs about, about folly. It says in, in Proverbs 9, 13, it says, the woman folly is loud. Amen. And it just reminds me of some places I've seen it always because there's some certain people that they're always loud and abrasive and, you know, Outing, you know, and sometimes you'll see that happen in, you know, in a in a store, you know, Walmart or something. Because people, they're wrong. Or Sister Rhonda, she tells me a lot of stories about how she has to deal with that kind of thing at uh, Home Depot now when she works at. Amen. Um, and she has to keep her composure because you can't really argue with the customer. Amen. Hello, and that becomes hard because you got to practice self restraint. Hello, which the fruit of the spirit calls, um, uh, what's that word again? Self-control. Hello, 
How many of you still struggle with self-control? It is. But one thing that you know, especially like a person like me who's ever, you've ever had a, an addictive, uh, addictive problem, you got to remember that like God told um, um, in, in the book of Genesis, he told um, Cain, sin is always crouching at the door, ready to devour us. Amen? So I look at it, you know, like they tell uh, an alcoholic, you know, that's cleaned up, they'll tell you, I'm only one drink away from being an alcoholic again. Or a drug addict, the same thing. Amen? Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. And that's what, I, that's what I deal with that every day. I mean, I, I, got, I, I know I used to have addictive problems, compulsion, compulsion, then by compulsion. Amen? Uh-huh. But you know what? God set me free. Yeah. Very powerful. But every day it'll be a battle. Maybe not with the things that I used to do, but then other things try to come in, like the like it says that when you lock the door on the devil, he goes and looks for an open window. You know? And it's always gonna happen, but I know that. So I walk around the house and I close all the windows. <laughs> Ain't getting in here, devil. Hello? Make sure the front door's locked, the back door's locked, amen. Two doors we lock. Hello? And then we lock the gate outside. We don't let the devil in for nothing. But you got to practice that for self, self-control. self Amen? Amen? Praise God. <clears throat> Proverbs 14.8 says, The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways. That's what we're talking about today. Give thought to our ways. Is there any foolishness or folly in our lives this day? Amen? Or at this time in our lives. But it says, the wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways. Think about things before you do them. Amen? But the folly of fools is deception. And a lot of times we deceive ourselves into getting back into what, that's the way I used to be. Well, I didn't really need it. I didn't really, but I'd make myself something why I had to have it. Hello? Or why I had to do it. Are you here? Praise God. Proverbs 14, 29 says, A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays folly. Have you ever seen that? Somebody that can just fly off the end, they're like a keg of dynamite, right? Just quick-tempered, oh, you know? That can happen when you um, suppress things instead of dealing with them. If you suppress things, you do become a keg of dynamite. And one day, somebody comes and they just did a little spark. Just a little. This is just a little thing. Bang! That's what me and Marco, we don't do that to each other. Because we already know we're a keg of dynamite sometimes. <laughs> Blow each other up. <laughs> Praise God. Mark 17, verse, Mark 7, verse 17 says, I hope these are up here so you can be with me, right? Yeah. This is the bottom of page four, Caesar. It says, after he left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. And he goes, are you so dull, he asked? Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach. I mean, Jesus was using a little common sense here because people were, they couldn't eat meat, they couldn't do this, you know what I mean? Hello? But he says, <clears throat> are you so dull, he asked, don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then out of his body, right? In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. Hello? He went on. What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. Does that make sense, folks? All right. Right. If you if you let your your sometimes if you let your feelings out, we heard a good thing yesterday that um, men there is a men's conference now. Men's don't men don't say you hurt my feelings. That sound kind of. I ain't gonna mess with nothing like that. Say it's not sister. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it, <laughs> But they say, you disrespected me. You know, 
that's, it, that's for real. So I, I could understand that because um, that's the way it is when you live out there in the, in the crazy gang life and stuff. You, know, you don't like to be disrespected, but you won't run around and say, hey man, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. He went on, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For for from within, out of a man, out of men's heart come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and what? What? Folly, is it up there? Folly, foolishness comes out of us and that can make us unclean. Hello? Amen. Praise God. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, in, um, and in the book of, of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9, And this is a scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3, it speaks of the last days. And it says in there, this, this verse, it says here that, but they will not get very far because as in the case of those men, and those men, meaning Janus and Jambres, those were the, the magicians that came against Moses when he went to, to, uh, to Pharaoh and he threw the snake down. And these are the magicians that do their snakes down, you know, as far as um, history um, says, that's who they were. And then when they left the promised land, I mean, when they left Egypt and they were on their way, this, these guys actually went with them and they continued to oppose the things of God with their sorceries. Amen? Amen. Those are traditional, so there's nothing that's in the Bible, but because you have to look it up. But we know that the Apostle Paul wouldn't use the names of Janus and Jambres unless they had some meaning or some significance. Amen? That's the kind of men they were, people they were. So that's why he uses them. He says, but they will not get very far because in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Amen? And that's the way it's going to be in the last days. Amen? It's, there's going to be a lot of foolishness uh, being spread out. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody said yesterday, the devil doesn't like the church. Amen. Hallelujah. But I, there's things when I'm listening to something, I'm listening to preaching. So, you know, he, I listen with wisdom and I say, oh yeah, he likes the church. Amen. Because that's where he's going to come in from. See, you don't have to mess with the outside. Because they're already, naturally, um, only the creation. Hello? Are you here with me? And they were already following the path and the life of sin. That's why we go out to evangelize them, right? Yeah, because yeah. they're lost. So, but he likes the church because he likes to come here and he likes to bring division. He likes to bring sin. That's why he always attacks the leaders, you know, the pastors and stuff because when they fall, a whole church can fragment and fall apart as well, amen? Yeah. I've actually saw that happen church that we were involved with before, amen? And all the people that actually fragmented and did that, they all went their own way and all of them lost and never really went back to church. And these people were people that were on fire for God, you know? You know, but because they allowed their flesh to take over. And anyways, praise God. Their foolishness was clear to everyone, amen? And then I want to, well, I wanted to share something real quick with you. This is not up there. The conclusion they draw is generally wrong and their charge upon the providence of God, groundless and unjust. Amen. This is, talks about the folly and the sin of men in perverting their own way. It says, it is often the case with regard to men's health. Many complain that God denies them the health and spirits which he has given to others, but health very largely but health very largely and very directly depends on men's management of themselves, right? By indulgence and fretfulness and inactivity, too close application, too close application to business, amen? In other words, if our health, men, you don't take care of your health because you're being too indulgent, you're you know, self-indulgent. You're letting yourself indulge in everything that's out there. You're either indulging on the, you know, the, 
of foods that are unhealthy for you, indulging on, on, on the consumption things that, that are there to, to drink and lie and, or, you know, hello. And what can happen? Again, that will start to control you. Some of the, that's why the Bible says that, you know, and I said, you're not my God. <laughs> that their stomach okay. is their God. Hello. Are you here with me? Or fretfulness, worry too much. Inactivity, sit around and be the couch potato man. Then you start to look like a potato, then you get mad at everybody. God, why did you let me become a couch potato? Amen? <laughs> right? Well, we blame, we start blaming things. We don't want to accept responsibility. But I gotta eat right, I gotta stay active, amen? I can't let myself get stressed and worry because all of those things can affect my health and mess me up, amen? <laughs> With regard to their circumstances in life, we see men impoverished and reduced to straits and difficulties. They complain that God brings them into straits and embarrasses their circumstances. But most persons are really in straits, straits meaning um, problems, amen, through their own negligence, um, carelessness, um, or extravagance. Many are ruined in this world by an in, in, indolent temper, amen. Misfortune was only was only another word for imprudence, amen. And then with regard to their relations in life, how many unhappy marriages there are, but they are almost always the consequence of foolish and willful choices. Many complain that their children are idle, disobedient, or undutiful. They don't want to work around the house. But this is generally the result of parental inefficiency in training for an example. Amen? With regard to men's minds and their religious concerns, many who make a profession of religion are uneasy and fretful without any external cause, but this is usually owing to their own negligence or self-willfulness. Amen? In other words, neglecting the things of God is also, is also, um, foolishness. Amen? Amen? Hello? And finally, we're going to just go through Psalms 51, if you have your Bibles there. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. See, this is when David realized his foolishness, his folly. Amen? But he didn't really realize that he had to be told how many of you think it's better to figure it out before somebody has to come and tell you? Because you know when somebody comes and tells you, you start jumping up and say, hey, don't judge me. Who are you? And then they'll know scripture because usually it's speaking in the, in the Christian community, amen? They'll know scripture. They'll say, hey, take the telephone pole out of your eye before you mess with my little speck. Are you hearing me? They, they know scripture. But they don't know it when they when it's coming to continue to, to let go of their own foolishness. Amen? Amen. David realized that. And Psalm 51 is why he wrote this for. He says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgression. He was, he knew that there was something there. Amen. How many of you know that there's something there today in your life Amen. that needs to be dealt with? Amen. And it's not a bad thing to deal with it. It's not a bad thing to let God regulate us. It's not a bad thing to let God, you know, use the pastor or a man or woman of God to, to bring it to our attention. That's a helpful. You don't get mad at them. You don't insult them. You say, oh, you know what? Yeah, maybe you're right. You know, it's good. You discern the spirit. If it, that's what the Bible says. Discern the spirit. If it's from God, you'll know it. If it's from the person, then you'll know that too. Hello. But either way, you don't lose your cool and start yelling at people. Hello? Um, blot, out, blot out my transgression. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Because he knew that he had a problem, didn't he? Yeah. And he knew that he'd been hiding it. He thought nobody was going to know or find out. If you read the story, you'll see that. Hello? Yeah. For I know my transgression. My sin is always before me. Against you and only you have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. 
Surely I was sinful from at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me, cleanse me. And I believe this is where we all have to get to today. Cleanse me with high stop and I shall be clean. Amen. Cleanse me with the blood of Christ and I shall be purified. Amen. Hallelujah. Cleanse me, Lord, with the blood of my Savior. Hallelujah. Wash away my sin, my iniquity, my transgression. Hello. Amen. Oh, but Pastor, I confessed all of my sins and all of I confessed them all when I came. That's good. Praise God. But um, have you made any sins since then? Since then? Yeah, we all have. Folly, foolishness. In thought, in heart, in action. But God is a forgiving God. He's a good God. Hello. Um, cleanse me with high sop and I will be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Hello. Amen. You see, he desired to be touched by God. He desired, you know, to be cleansed. He didn't want to be walking around with this, you know, as a shadow in his heart or in his mind or, in, you know, hello. He wanted things to change. Something was missing, folks. And he's going to share that in a moment. Hello. <clears throat> he says, listen to this in verse 8. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, he started to understand what was really of value. He started to know that his God is a God of forgiveness and mercy. Remember, he opens up this, this song with, have mercy on me, O Lord. Amen. And if you remember the story of the, of the two um, men that went for prayer, the story that Jesus told about there was a righteous, uh, well, there was a man, a, a Pharisee that went to the temple and, and then there was another poor man in the back. He wouldn't even go. He'd just stay with his head bowed down. And the Pharisee got up in front and started saying, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like that stinky sinner back there. Amen. And then Jesus said that the man back there just, he wouldn't even look up because he knew how tough things were in his life and how wrong he had been. He just says, Lord, have mercy on me. Jesus said, who went home? with a changed heart. Who went home with a better heart? The one that was up there saying, I'm glad I'm not like them. Or the one that said, Lord, I know I'm messed up. Have mercy on me. He said the guy in the back went home with a blessing. The one in the front went home and stayed as he was. Hello? Amen. So he says in verse 10, create a pure heart. Create in me a pure heart and renew a steadfast. Do not take your my take me from your presence or take the Holy Spirit from me. Restore, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing and a, a willing spirit to sustain me. And then he goes on to say, and after that I will share my testimony. I would tell what God has done in my life. Hallelujah. He says here, then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O oh God, the God who saves me. My, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or else I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. Amen? And you can go on and finish reading it, but that's the gist of Psalms 51 and David, a man that got stuck in his folly and was living in his folly. But when it came the things to change, he changed. He asked God because only God can change us. Only God's word can change us. Yeah. Only the Holy Spirit can help us. Hello? Amen. And I'll close with these 
four scriptures. It says in Psalms 27, 14, wait on the Lord and be strong. Take heart, take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Amen. He's going to do things for you. He's going to do things in you. Hallelujah. But Lord, don't blame him if you don't do your part. Amen. Don't blame the church. Don't blame the pastor. Don't blame the Bible. Amen. Don't blame Christians. Amen. Look, look, look first. Look in the mirror. Amen. Because if we keep always looking at others, that's only for us looking for ways to stay away. God didn't do that. God doesn't make those. God did everything right. Yeah. Man is going to fail. Man is going to make mistakes. We're all going to do that. Yep. That's why I'm up here being transparent. I make mistakes, but I don't let them stay there. I go to my God and I say, God, I need your help. Amen. Help me, Lord. You see that? I got to church a little earlier today. Yeah, I did. I knew last week I was kind of dripping. So, see, those little things, they, they bug me, but I just kind of like, I'm going to get to, I don't want to hear Sister Betty. I don't want to hear her say, Oh, here you are again late, Pastor. Hello. <laughs> Psalm 37, verse 34 says, wait for the Lord and keep his way. Hallelujah. See, in waiting for the Lord, you keep his way. Things may not be good right now. Things may be tough and you may be struggling, but wait for the Lord. Amen. Right? Yes. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalm 130 verse 5 says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I put my hope. Hallelujah. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. Hallelujah. And in his word, I put my hope. Glory. Who's the word of God? Our Lord Jesus. That's right. Jesus Hallelujah. is the word of God. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And then finally, Proverbs 20, 22 says, do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. Amen. 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 Those grudges, those bitternesses. See, God Hallelujah. doesn't want us running around. Amen. Hallelujah. I've had to endure some of those tests these years. Amen. People done me wrong business wise. People did this. They didn't do what they were going to say. But you know what? And I get angry and that old spirit, that old things, go get them. You know how to deal with it. You know how to deal with it like that. Right? I say, yeah. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit says, no. No. Amen? Amen. And then I remember whose I am and who I am. Are you Amen. 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 And I love God more. Hallelujah. Never give up on God because he'll never give up on you. And he hasn't given up on you. Things may not be all kosher in the way you're doing, but God says, Jesus says that I give you peace. Peace not like the world gives, but my peace that passes all understanding. Amen. If you could just get that one scripture found in Psalms 14, I mean, Gospel of John chapter 14. If you could just receive that, his peace, your whole life will change. Yep. Your whole life will change. You'll have more self-control because you're relying on that peace. No, yeah. no other person can give it to you. No substance can give it to you. Amen. His peace lasts forever. Do you love God today? Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your holy word. We thank you for the message you've given to us, Lord. We thank you that you have never, never given up on us. We thank you that that was declared the day that you hung on the cross for our sins, that you redeemed us, you set us free. Now let us walk in a way where, Lord, we don't, we don't let sin you know, wreck our lives anymore. You said for us to go away and sin no more. Yeah. Well, we know that's kind of challenging and we really try, Lord, but no, we're going to drop the bomb. But help us to know that you're going to be there to help us and to get it right with you. And when we drop the ball, we pick it up. Help us, Lord, as we dust ourselves off and come home to you. Yes. 
We love you, Father God. We thank you, Jesus, for everything you did. Holy Spirit, we thank you for bringing us the strength, for bringing us encouragement today. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. May your blessing be upon each and every person in this place today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you folks from uh, Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. We pray that uh, the Lord has blessed you in a great way today and pray that you continue to watch uh, our services live on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. And also if you would, uh, if you would share it, that would be a blessing for us um, and touch somebody's life with the word of God. Amen. Amen. We love you all from Unshackled Ministries. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.